Okay. So thank you. We will start recording now. First, could you introduce yourself briefly? Myself, <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> hi, everyone. My name is Benjamin Le Philibert. I am the uh, the founder and, and, and managing director of Light Blue Environmental Consulting based in Bangkok. Thank you. Now, we'd like to jump straight into our first question. What was it that inspired Light Blue Consulting to become a member of PADA, and how was your experience so far? So uh, the uh, the main uh, uh, motivation was to uh, was to join one of the the largest uh, uh, travel association, uh, which is uh, which is Pata, and to be able to uh, to reach out uh, to um, to other fellow members um, across I would say almost across the globe, um, and uh, and of course so the the networking uh, aspect was the uh, the main uh, the main motivation as well as to be able to access some of the insights uh, industry insights and uh, and um, as well as gain some some visibility for 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 what we do at uh, at Lightroom. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, now on to the second question. We would like to know. So far, which PADA event have you attended that you particularly enjoyed? And could you give us like any reason why you enjoyed that event? <laughs> if you can remember any. <laughs> no, I can't remember any because we rejoined, we were a member of PADA. And then uh, I remember back in the days because I, I, I first, well, we were first part of PADA uh, around 2015, something like that. Then we, uh, then we were no longer uh, members and then we rejoined uh, about a year ago. And then when we rejoined, it was already covered. So there was no, no specific event uh, that, uh, that we joined. Those I could remember were, were related to sustainable tourism uh, in partnership with, uh, in partnership with uh, other international organizations. I think we're, it was with the EU at the time and it was on sustainable tourism um, in, I think it was in, uh, in Cambodia, in Siem Reap. That's amazing, thank you so much. Um, and what are you looking forward to gaining from the PADA membership that will benefit your organization? I know you already told us to, you know, create networks, but is there any other reason why, like, something that you would look forward to gaining from the PADA membership? <laughs> Especially in this time, like, when the industry's kind of paused at the moment, is there anything yeah. you're looking forward to? In the yeah, well, well, closer, closer collaboration is, is something that I raised uh, uh, that I raised earlier. That um, as we are very, um, um, we are very niche in our expertise, uh, which is food waste prevention, uh, especially in the hospitality sector. There is a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, of your members that are that are as well, of course, in the the hospitality sector and the, and this sort of solutions are are not that widely um, available and uh, and we were hoping to get a closer collaboration especially on the capacity building um, raising awareness and building capacity of, of industry professionals to better equip them for what is coming up next which is hopefully soon a rebound for the hospitality sector but it will be very different from what it was and to equip the industry for what are the new expectations are, I would say stronger expectations from travelers when it comes to responsible, uh, responsible tourism. So um, that would be one of my, uh, my, main, my main point. Okay, thank you. And my last question is that, what are some of your upcoming or ongoing projects that you would like to share with us? Um, yeah, there is this this project in particular which we are very excited about. We are about to we are actually uh, uh, launching uh, as we speak uh, a destination based food waste prevention program uh, in Mauritius Island. So we are we are working in partnership with some local local players, some of, of which are our trade association, some others are um, local charity that are collecting food surplus and um, they are there are nine pilots nine restaurants being uh, from hotel industry uh, restaurants or or um, canteen in that case uh, 
uh, a canteen of a, of a large organization. And all of them will follow the same program, which is about raising awareness, which is about uh, uh, implementing uh, uh, and being trained on, on our FIT technology, which is uh, Food Intel Tech, on the monitoring of food waste in their kitchens. Um, then they are being trained on uh, implementing this certification program called the Pledge on Food Waste, where they are being taught about the, uh, the 95 criteria and how to comply with the certification process. And, uh, and they are being accompanied throughout uh, those six months period by uh, accredited consultant, the Pledge on Food Waste. So consultants that have been going through a stringent training to become accredited consultant and those those consultants are, uh, each of them have one pilot and, and we'll be accompanying them throughout the certification process with the end goal of, of having those nine pilots to be certified uh, by Christmas this year. So that's, uh, that's a first and it's, uh, it's a way as well to, uh, to uh, uh, stress test the, uh, the solutions while uh, considering how can this be scaled up uh, at the destination level. So definitely something that is applicable in other, other region uh, uh, within uh, Asia Pacific and, uh, and hopefully something that will inspire uh, other destination and, and, and uh, DMOs and, and local organizations uh, being public or private to, uh, to replicate this model. Amazing, thank you for sharing with us about your um, plans and the projects. Um, and um, since we have like a brief idea of your company, but since this video is gonna be um, recorded and gonna be posted on our website, could you give us some like brief inf um, information or explanation about your company, including like the mission statement or what the company hopes to achieve in the future? Yeah. So um, Light Blue was established in 2012 with a mission to reconcile uh, business excellence and with sustainability. Mm -hmm. um, we, over the, uh, over the past eight years, we have been dedicating uh, uh, almost our entire resources to address the issue of food waste being a topic that is that is widely misunderstood and 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 that gets very little um, attention so we have been designing a, a scope of, of solutions ranging from um, technical workshops to uh, tailored consulting um, technology that is helping to answer the key question related to food waste how much when where what why and uh, a certification with the pledge on food waste which then gives um, some sort of a magic box for um, for beneficiaries being hotels, restaurants, canteens, schools, universities, or even in-flight catering, cruise lines, to adopt which sort of solutions uh, uh, suit them uh, best, being a combination of those, or starting maybe with a, a building capacity of their of their employees while moving towards more advanced solutions. And uh, our ultimate goal is to embed uh, a shift of mindset in the industry to um, consider food waste as, as it is, which is an absurdity, which is just a reflection of, of an, efficient, uh, an inefficient system. And most importantly, to get the industry players to consider that there are several options to be looked at before throwing food to the bin, which is the worst possible solution. Starting from the preventive side, then looking at redistribution for human consumption, then looking at transformation for animal feed, and if not possible, transformation for something valuable being uh, uh, food waste to energy or food waste to compost, with the worst option being food waste to landfill, which is the case in, in I would say, 95% uh, of, uh, of the operators. So that shift of perspective would lead to a shift of practices that can have a fantastic impact in terms of, of carbon emission reductions. Uh, thank you very much. I think um, such businesses is crucial nowadays, especially because sustainability is such a trend and key element for every organization in the industry at the moment. So thank you very much for sharing with us about that. And um, could you um, exp uh, tell us what kind of post recovery opportunities do you plan to leverage in your company? 
Um, yes, well, to us it's a bit different because, well, there, there is no post recovery. Uh, there was, there was, uh, there was, uh, you know, the super emergency uh, uh, mode that we got into at the moment the uh, the pandemic started to strike, um, which happened already, uh, you know, in 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 March last year. Um, because we didn't simply have the cash flow to, uh, to wait for the post pandemic to see what's going to happen as 90 percent of our customers were either hotels or restaurants that completely right. shut down so it was either learn to adapt or die um, so we did uh, shift uh, our entire operations to um, to be fully digital uh, in about a month and a half I would say and uh, and now we already have this new this new model which which is uh, which is proven to be very effective because we um, we increased our our revenue by almost fifty percent during pandemic compared to pre pandemic, um, where we are focusing on 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 education so training uh, training of of, uh, of professionals we are focusing on um, uh, a larger scale um, uh, publicly financed uh, uh, solutions either publicly or or, or with finance financing coming from. Uh, development agencies uh, at destination level. So with larger pool of, of beneficiaries and uh, instead of going one to one and uh, and the digitalization as well of our technology uh, has proven very useful in reaching out to players from Brazil uh, as we have now all the way to uh, to Vietnam. Uh, so it's, um, it's not past pandemic it's uh it's yeah it's pandemic uh, kind of uh, survival mode that we entered in uh about about 14 months ago and and that's uh that's that's where we're gonna keep on uh going for sure perfect thank you very much um could you ex uh, elaborate more on the digitalization that you just have mentioned like yeah sure well we were we were uh initially well, our model was was we would we would mainly go from from one hotel to the to the next, um, and our package our package of, of solutions comprised uh, everything from capacity building to the technology to the implementation of the system in the kitchen, to uh, working with different departments as we have a transversal approach, uh, different departments involved or those that have an influence on on the on food and on food waste. Um, while reviewing the procedures on site and then, you know, having a very comprehensive report, being financial or, or about the operation and providing clear recommendation and accompanying them in the, in the process. Uh, on site was a very important part of our, of our solution, which, which was the beginning. So after the preparation was about to, to bring a squad of, uh, of consultant and, and to spend uh, usually three days on site to review all the back of house, the operation of the different waste flows and food flows and, and etc. and procedures. So this 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 not being uh, feasible, then we have to we had to adapt, and uh, and um, we have been dividing as well our our solutions. So we don't really run it the same way, and uh, so we would train uh, build capacity, uh, being general or or department specific. We would uh, we would as well, as well train and and help to establish the system in the kitchen, where we would do everything remotely. Uh, uh, so there is all the prep work, and then there will be as well this this sort of walkthrough uh, with video, etc., to be able to to get a clear understanding of the way the uh, the kitchens are, are are organized, and and how to have an efficient system in place uh, to monitor food waste, and uh, and then um, we have been combining as well the um, the type of solutions that are required depending on the type of issues that that arise mm -hmm. um, and uh, and that means that we can only support uh, uh, them um, but of course there is a need for buy-in and for execution as well from the from our our partners uh, perspective uh, or I would say side so those are, are the main the main adaptation that uh, that were brought compared to what was doing before Amazing. Thank you very much. And uh, my last question will be, since this whole interview is for the SME day, could you share with us your thoughts or maybe your um, opinions um, towards the small and medium-sized enterprises, like the businesses that are um, 
trying to develop further in the future and how can maybe other um, organizations or companies could help those small size and medium size businesses and then mm. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I can share. Uh, I can share only my 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 perspective, and in particular, uh, coming from a, a specific segment, I would say of the uh, of the SMEs being SMEs, but in the uh, in the sustainability uh, side of it, um, it's tough. Get uh, get ready. Get ready to take hits. Um, make sure that you can tug along with uh, with some uh, large groups in a in I would say in a more um, uh, established way, um, rather than going one by one. Um, and I would, uh, I would suggest as well to always be aware, uh, and to dedicate enough time and resources to be very aware about what is happening when it comes to government support for SMEs, uh, whatever the destination and, and, uh, and it may not only be government support, but it may be international organization support or development agency support. Uh, that is available out there uh, that I think is very useful. Um, for us, it's a bit different because we've been uh, up and running for, for quite some time, but, but we are joining today uh, um, uh, some sort of an accelerator by, uh, by Google on uh, SDGs. Uh, this sort of, of opportunities doesn't cost you any money, doesn't cost, it costs you time and, and, and well, brain power, that's for sure. But uh, but you, it opens up like big time. Your network, your perspective gives you visibility, and uh, and it helps you as well to uh, to uh, attract the well needed talent. Um, which is the last last point uh, I would like to make is uh, yeah, humans uh, humans are are everything uh, still now. You can have the best uh, the best technology if you don't have the right team uh, behind to make the whole thing fly it's very difficult so um i would say uh, don't underestimate the uh, importance of um of nurturing your team uh and treating them uh, as uh, as they should if you wanna if you wanna strive and, and go far thank you very much i'm pretty sure this information will be very helpful for many um small startup businesses as well um all right so we would like to thank you again for taking the time to share your story uh, it was a great opportunity for us even to learn more about SMEs and your thoughts on part of membership. Um, is there anything you'd like to conclude we, um, with before we end the call or, you know, is there something? Uh, well, yes, but it's, it doesn't have, well, anyway, you will have to, you will have did it uh, afterwards. Um, no, no, we are, we are looking, actively looking for, we have several positions to fill uh, at Libre. Um, so it would be uh, it would be super nice if this could be uh, this could be shared uh, internally at uh, at Pata, uh, well internally and, and externally of course, um, because it's uh, yeah it's a, it's a tough time for the for the graduates um, those that are just graduating from typically hospitality school of course it's a it's a terrible timing. Um, so we hope that it would be slightly less complicated than, than normally, but, um, anyways, so we, yeah, we got a few position if we could, uh, if we could share them with, uh, with you guys, that would be nice. Right. Thank you so much again. And we hope to see you again soon. Stay safe. And yes. Thank, thank you very, you much. very much. Thank you. Thank you for the Bye. time. Take Bye. care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.